All right, everybody, take your seats. Class is about to begin. It's time to start Curly Hair 101. What's up, everyone? I'm Beyond Grenade, and you're watching Beyond Grenade today. And today, I'm going to break it down with everything you need to know about curly hair. If you are someone that is new to the curly hair world, meaning you're transitioning, don't really know what to do, this video's for you. If you're a girl that just, unfortunately, hates her curly hair because she doesn't know how to take care of it, this video is for you. If you are a mom or dad of a mixed child and you just don't know what to do with all this new curl, this video is for you. Now, if you're one of my loyal subscribers, you should know everything I'm about to say in this video because you've already graduated from Curly Hair 101 and you've moved on to Curly Hair 405 where you're still trying to figure out porosity and protein hair treatments. We're not gonna go that deep today. Today's just going to be all the basic things that you need to know in order to start your curly hair journey. The first thing you need to know is what type of curly hair do you have? Yes, it is broken into type 2A, B, or C, type 3A, 3B, 3C, or type 4A, 4B, 4C. But that's a little bit complicated. If you wanna know about that, you can watch my full video on how to figure out your hair type. But the main thing that I want you to know right now at this level is if your hair is wavy, like big curls, loose curls, or is it like mine to where you have these curly little ringlets, or is it even tighter and thicker than my hair to where it's more like an afro type texture? Once you figure that out, it'll make it a lot easier for you to find products that will work for you and your hair type. Now, if you have the wavy, looser curls, you're probably gonna want lightweight products, maybe something like a mousse. If you have hair like mine, you could get away with both mousse or cream, but you also could use a gel. It really just depends on the porosity of your hair, which is the whole other video that you could try to tackle if you think you're ready. But if your hair is very coarse and thick and very tight curly hair, you really need thick, creamy products to really get into that hair and give it some moisture. Now let's go on to the more generic curly hair things you should be doing. If you have curly hair, you should not be washing your hair every day. I know, this was news to me too. Back in middle school and high school, I washed my hair every single day with shampoo and conditioner, thinking that that's what I had to do because my curls would just be frizzy the next day if I didn't. So that's what I did for years. And then I realized and learned we're not supposed to do that. Our hair is so cool that we don't even have to wash it every day. Honestly, I have not washed my hair in three days and I probably can go three more days without washing my hair and it'll still look bomb diggity. So if you have curly hair or your kids have curly hair, it is best to make sure that you have some good products so that their hair looks fabulous on day one. And then on day two is the day that you're going to just refresh them. You don't wanna wash them again with shampoo and conditioner. Just spritz them with some water, add a little bit more product, and then your curls will just revive themselves. Once you're done washing your hair with your sulfate-free and silicone-free shampoo and conditioner, you do not want to dry it using a regular cotton towel. If you dry your hair with a towel, it's going to create frizz. So do not do that. Actually just get a cotton t-shirt and dry your hair with the t-shirt instead. You could invest in a microfiber towel that also works great, but you don't wanna use anything that's going to give your hair any type of friction because that will cause frizz before you even start putting in your styling products. It is also best to apply the styling products while your hair is still at least damp, if not soaking wet. The next thing you need to know in order to have your curls last throughout the week is how you sleep in them. You can't just go to sleep all willy-nilly like you have straight hair. We have some rules, okay? So if you have curly hair, it is best to sleep on a satin or silk pillowcase. That way your hair is just rolling around on the satin and it's not creating any friction like it would with a cotton pillowcase. And that way you don't get as much frizz when you wake up in the morning. Besides sleeping on a satin pillowcase, you also wanna put your hair up in a pineapple. Now, if you've heard the word pineapple in the curly hair community, you might be thinking like, why are all these curly girls like obsessed with pineapples? Let me tell you. I mean, I don't have an obsession or anything. So a pineapple is just the name of the hairstyle when you put all of your hair on the very top of your head. So let me demonstrate for you. So you're gonna grab all of your hair and you're gonna bring it to the front of your head, just like so. Then you're gonna get a scrunchie and you just put it around one time. So you don't want it to be like as tight as a ponytail, just one time, bloop, and let it flop over. 
Not only is it a fabulous hairstyle, this is how you should be sleeping because now all your curls are protected on the top of your head. So when you sleep, your curls are not being disturbed by your pillowcase or anything. But the best part is once you take it down in the morning, boop, your curls are good as new. Pulling your hair back into a ponytail is going to make all this part really straight and look a little extra ugly in the morning. But then when all your curls are just put up, then they fall back down right into place. Now back when I did cut off majority of my hair, my hair was too short to put my hair into a pineapple. So if you are in that stage where your hair is just too short for a pineapple, definitely sleep on a satin pillowcase or invest in a satin bonnet. Moving right along, let's talk about hair products. It is so important for you to find curly hair products that work for your hair. If you wake up in the morning and you just apply water or like coconut oil and then you're mad that your hair is frizzy, like you have no right to be mad because you're not using products that are claiming to tame frizz. Coconut oil does not get rid of frizz. Water does not get rid of frizz and neither does leave-in conditioners. You need actual styling products that will actually say, fights frizz or frizz controlling or curl definition, curl defining right on the bottle. I have a full video with all of my favorite curly hair products and I definitely recommend that you guys try at least one of these products. The next thing I want you guys to do, especially if you are transitioning and trying to get your curl pattern back or maybe you have some straight straggler pieces that just aren't curling, you need to revive your curls by doing a deep conditioning treatment once a week. If I had a dollar for every time I told this to somebody, I would literally be rich. It's gotten so bad that on my phone in the little like text suggestion, if I type in deep condition, it suggests once a week. Like that's how often I'm telling people to do this. It is so important to keep our curls moisturized. And when you use a deep conditioner, which is different than a regular conditioner, you leave it on your hair for 20 minutes, just once a week, and then you rinse it out. That gives your hair a good little spa day to really soak up all the nutrients it needs to be shiny, bouncy, and healthy. I also have a full video on all of my favorite deep conditioners, so please, check out that video and try one of those and really commit to doing it once a week. But if you're one of those transitioners that has those long straight straggler pieces that just are not curling anymore, you need to cut it. So many girls hold on to those long straight pieces because they want their length and they think long hair is better. But look, I don't understand why you rather have long, ugly hair versus short, beautiful, healthy hair. Like I just, I just will never understand that. Cutting off any dead, damaged ends is so important. It'll also make your hair grow faster and just really look a million times better. So those are the most important things I think you should know as a curly girl, guy, or parent to a curly kid. And I really hope that you implement all of these things because they will definitely make a difference in how your curls look or how you feel about your curly hair. It is so important to love and embrace the natural hair that is growing out of your head. And if you fight it every day, you're just gonna be miserable. So I am here to help with any tips and tricks that I can possibly give you to make you realize how amazing your curly hair is. It literally breaks my heart when I hear people say that they hate their curly hair or they don't like it or it's too big or they don't know what to do with it. Like, oh, it just breaks my soul. If you have any other curly questions, go ahead and leave a comment. I really want my comment section to be a place where we all can give our own tips and tricks and help each other out with our curly hair journeys. But I also have an entire curly hair playlist with full detailed videos on pretty much everything you need to know about curly hair. So go ahead and binge watch my entire channel and I'm sure you'll learn a thing or two. If you found this video helpful, I hope you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I post new curly hair videos every single week, giving you guys tips, tricks, and product reviews so you know exactly what to do with your curly hair. And if once a week isn't enough, you also can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Ms. Bianca Renee so we could really be curl friends. I hope to see you all next week. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today.